Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo. <laughs> another week down, another week of toy news. <laughs> that's that's what you and I come together every week to talk about. And, you know, they tried to keep us down. Not happening. Unless they try again. Then we'll see what happens. But anyway, let's talk about some toys. As you saw in the intro, Super 7 posted a new Instagram story where they were showing off their latest photo shoot. And I was looking at it and I thought, oh, okay, cool. I almost clicked and swiped and whatever you do on Instagram. And then I realized, oh, look at that. It's actually some Thundercats figures we haven't seen before. It's small, so it's kind of hard to see, but it looks like a proper scaled Pumira. She's been shrunk down a little bit because her first figure was a little too tall. Then there's Tigra, there's Mumra with Mamut, and then Groon. So it looks like, they I, I'm sure they did this on purpose, they have revealed series two of their Thundercats Ultimates line. And it is almost time for another round of pre-orders, so that makes sense. But Super 7 also needs to get on the ball with releasing some of the stuff they've had on pre-order. Don't get me wrong, seeing new characters in the line gives me a lot of hope, gives me a lot of faith in the line continuing but I also like getting some plastic too. I'm just a tiny bit leery of putting new pre-orders in when there's still stuff on pre-order. You know what I mean? Oh, Mesco has some new pre-orders? Cool, I'll go do that real quick. I don't keep up with DC Comics. Well, I don't keep up with a lot of comics these days, but I will, I will, someday. And I don't buy a lot of DC collectibles, but I did notice this week two new deceased figures going up for pre-order. The DC Comics, DC Collectibles, DC Essentials, deceased, <laughs> branding! Green Lantern and Aquaman look like reuse from the previous figures in the DC Essentials line, but that's what this line is built on. A lot of reuse. I get it, get the most bang for your buck out of the molds, that makes sense. And they do have new zombie-like heads and then the blood effects all over it, so it's not... <sighs> It's cool, it's a little bit different, and honestly, I've been kind of interested in the deceased event, whatever it is. The San Diego airport was plastered in it whenever I flew into there for Comic-Con, and <laughs> on a very basic level, it's a damn clever name. I, I gotta give it up to them for that. Both of these are set to release in August of 2020. Now, we've all known that McFarlane Toys was getting the DC license in 2020, but there has been nothing since. The announcement, and then nothing. And I'm sure that's due to contract. They don't want to step on Mattel's toes. There's still a few weeks left in the year, but I'm sure as soon as 2020 hits, it's going to be like, hey, we got some DC stuff for you. But there has been leak lists floating around, and the latest is a GameStop listing for some of the pre-orders, and it falls right in line. There's a couple of new things, but mostly it's stuff we've heard about. Also, remember this is GameStop, so the prices are a little bit higher. In the higher price spectrum, there is Armored Superman and Batman, and then there is Build-A-Figure. You would think Hasbro would have a lockdown on BAF or Build-A-Figure or whatever. Batman, Batgirl, and Nightwing. And the rumored Build-A-Figure is the Batmobile, which makes Build-A-Figure even more weird to use here. It's crazy in my mind to think of a scaled Batmobile split into three parts and being big enough and cool enough to fit some of these figures, especially at the 7-inch scale, if that's what this line is. Consider me curious. Also listed at $26.99 is the Arkham Asylum Batman and Joker, and in front of those says AF7. So, is that confirmation that these are 7-inch scale? but I'm leaning towards yes. Don't quote me on that. Don't come back and said, you said it was seven inch scale. AF7 also leads us to Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman Gold, which I'm assuming are movie tie-ins. Also at this price point is the Batman slash Superman, Batman and Superman. Branding! Stylized Green Lantern and Superman, which on other lists are, uh, say animated. So I'm not quite sure about those. And then there is, I, I hate lists. And then the DC TV Arrow, which I can only guess is a male. I'm excited here because it seems to be picking from different sources and just throwing a couple of characters at us from those sources. So there may be something for everybody here despite scale or there may be different scales. Who knows? Nobody except for McFarlane Toys at this point. We'll probably see some promotional picks and then they'll pop up. That's it. GameStop is listing all these figures coming out at the 1st of February except for the Wonder Woman and the Arkham Asylum stuff. That'll be April, somewhere in there. Sticking within the realm of McFarlane Toys, just today, Friday, they announced they will be doing action figures for Cyberpunk 2077. There will be a 12-inch and a 7-inch Johnny Silverhand, and then a couple of more 7-inch action figures. I'm assuming that's a wave, and then the 12-inch will be a special thing, like the Fortnite stuff. But what I'm interested in is they also announced My Hero Academia Wave 2. No pictures, but on that list is Ida, 
Kirishima, Todoroki, and Uraraka. That just makes decisions way harder. As you all know, Figma has also announced all of these characters except for Ida. I was hoping to hitch my horse to the Figma, and I don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna buy the Figma stuff, but that line for students, and then I was hoping McFarlane would skew to the larger characters like Aizawa or Stain, get us some of the teachers, get us some of the villains, and then I could mix and match. But I'm going to wait and see what McFarlane gives us because at that price point, it's it's so easy just to grab them, you know? While some people, especially the diehards, don't care for the McFarlane line, I will take their Shigaraki all day, every day. I love that figure. I would have liked to have seen the eye peeking through the hair, but otherwise it's an awesome action figure. But McFarlane did show some pictures for some solicitations this week. It wasn't all lists and words. For their Mortal Kombat 11 line, there is Raiden and Johnny Cage. Now you guys know I don't know Mortal Kombat. I know even less about Mortal Kombat 11. So when I look at this, it looks weird. Just the colors and stuff, I'm used to a certain color scheme, a certain look. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying it was, what? Is, who is that? Oh, Johnny's a lot closer to what I remember. Not a lot different there. You could just look at the figure and go, oh man, so full of himself. What an asshole. Comes with a staff, some hands, and then lightning effects, while Cage comes with a trophy, sunglasses, and then his own action figure. I think that's the most tempting thing to me here, playing with an action figure. That's playing with an action figure. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, though, is Hasbro, because they like to reveal stuff and then show tons of pictures and then you're left waiting for the solicitation half the time. They debuted their Marvel Legends Rider Squirrel Girl and Cosmic Ghost Rider back at San Diego Comic-Con in the summer and then we just keep getting more and more pictures. We haven't actually got pre-orders here in the US yet and I say it like that because Amazon Canada actually put solicitations up earlier this week and along with that, as usual, we get new promotional shots. Squirrel Girl's look has evolved and changed over the years, so this does look like Squirrel Girl, but at the same time, it's not my mind's eye of how I see Squirrel Girl. So I'll get it because it's Squirrel Girl, but it's not the perfect version. And I know that's very nitpicky, but I likes what I likes. But these new pics do show that it doesn't come with grip hands so she can actually hold on to the scooter. Whoops! Because besides some squirrels, she comes with the scooter, which I am now realizing is essentially her stand. Because there's no way in hell she is going to stand with that big ass plastic tail sticking out. So in the display, you're going to have her sitting on it, leaning against it, kind of holding on to it. It's there to prop her up, essentially. Which oh, is kind of a great idea, but at the same time, ooh, the price point on this, if you just want Squirrel Girl and not the scooter, it's up there. But who is slowly moving up my want list because of new pictures is Cosmic Ghost Rider. Now I have absolutely no exposure to this character except for the comments I usually get whenever I say I have absolutely no exposure to this character. <laughs> you know what I mean. I get the idea and I was coming around to the idea of having a cool Ghost Rider adjacent character on the shelf but Man, the more and more pictures we get. Look at that motorcycle with the pipes and the flames and the big energy globe on front. It's just so weird and wacky. I gotta have it. And then the figure itself looks amazing the more and more I see it. So much presence, so much personality. I mean, look at this picture. I will admit there's a lot of Toy Biz leg gap there, but if it's to get him to sit on the bike better, that's what you have to live with when you're not using actual flesh and bone. and cloth and stuff you know i'm convinced that this is my most wanted character who i know nothing about in 2020 right here amazon canada lists these as coming out in march hopefully solicitations in the u.s come up soon because i'm i'm ready i sometimes randomly pop into the bandai model kit site just to see what's going on because they don't really announce stuff and i'll be damned if i didn't do that yesterday and saw a new model kit and I say new very loosely. Here is the Bandai Star Wars model kit hologram R2-D2. I can't help feeling that this line is just swirling the bowl. I mean, they just keep putting out more and more astromechs, which is just little tweaks or changes here. Essentially, same manufacturing process, same molds. I don't know. I love them. Don't get me wrong. I do love them. And I love putting them together. I've got a stack over there I gotta do. But just the same thing over and over. An obvious cash grab. They're trying to get all the money they can out of molds they already have. I'll be damned if it didn't work. God! You can't make a Jolly Rancher toy and expect me not to want it. I can't pass up a figure that looks like candy. 
I just can't do it. I don't know, it's one of those things I have. But relatively speaking, it's fairly cheap, it's fun to put together, and then you have a cool little toy afterwards. So it's an experience, it's a process that I, I absolutely adore. I can't help it. But then they went and made it a Soul Web exclusive, which when it comes to model kits is a little bit harder to get, or, or a lot harder to get. So it's just Bandai playing with my emotions. Oh, well, there's an R2 kit, but it does look kind of cool. How you doing? I want you. I can't get it. What? Psych, no lickable Astro Mech for you. I will find a way though. I've got to get that. So, oh, such a sucker. But while I was on the Bandai Hobby site and looking at this, I noticed the Rise of Skywalker Kylo Ren model kit. For some reason, I don't remember this. And if I did see it before, I think I wrote it off as just being a re-release of the Force Awakens Kylo kit. Because that's what I've been telling everybody who comments with the, hey, are you going to build the Rise of Skywalker Kylo Ren kit? And I'm just like, no, because I built that several years ago. Why would I do that? But I haven't been getting responses back to that comment, and now I know why. Because they're just sitting back going, this guy's an idiot. It's not the same kit. Now that I look at it, it's pretty much all new sculpt, especially compared to that one. It doesn't have the long robe. It's got a different texture to the chest. It's got the broken up helmet. It's also got the lightsaber effect. You know, the it has a plastic hood piece, and then it has the usual model kit cheesecloth looking cape that's too flat and stuff. So that may have to be changed. Yes, I did order it. Let's just break the tension right there. <laughs> no need for suspense. I bought it. Came out two months ago. This is all old news, but it's new to me. So there you go. Remember back to, oh man, way back, way back to two minutes ago or so where I was worried about the model kit line swirling the drain going just away? Here's a new sculpt kit. So who knows what the hell Bandai's doing? Just give us new stuff and I'll keep buying it when I realize that it is something new. And then lastly, probably my favorite reveal of the week. A few days before the official reveal, they posted a teaser silhouette and the guesses were all pretty tight. There was Agent Venom, there was Cosmic Ghost Rider, there was Mezco's own Cyber Rider, and then there were a lot of guesses of KG Beast. But those of us who guessed KG Beast thought, that seems like an odd character for the Mezco line. And then when they finally revealed it, it was like, holy shit, it's KG Beast. Now, I don't know a lot about KG Beast. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> but I know of the character, and I've seen him around. I've just never read a story where he was the main focus villain. But I've always liked the look, and I'll take any villains I can in the Mezco line, so this is completely welcome. It comes with a lot of weird, wacky weapon attachments for either the arm or for him to hold. An assortment of hands, and then three alternate heads that include an unmasked head that if you're not going to use it on this figure, it'll be super useful in custom fodder. You can use it for a lot of other things. The most exciting thing here, though, is how deep a cut this is, especially for Mezco. We've gotten used to getting the Batmans and the Supermans and the Jokers and the Harleys, oh my. The A-listers, the well-knowns. So to get a character that isn't quite as well-known, it gives me a lot more faith in the continuation of the line. What are they going to get to next? Give me a Catman, maybe? Or a Ragdoll? I just want somebody to give me Secret Six. That's that's where I'm heading with that. Deadshot's higher up on that list, so I'll take him too. Mezco. Let's see more of this. And that's it for this week. It's kind of short and sweet, but it's still a lot of information. If you want to see better pictures of this or know where to pre-order or more information, Everything that you saw here will be on the Foosh front page tomorrow, Saturday at noon. I keep having to point out the day because this is going up on different platforms at different times. The weekly goes up on Friday on the Plus for the members of the Foosh Patreon, but then it hits Saturday on YouTube and Vimeo and everywhere else. So if you're in a position to help the channel or just want to see stuff early, then join the Plus. But if not, you're perfectly fine. You'll just see it just a little bit later. And now I'm going to edit this, get it posted to the plus, and I'm going to go see Rise of Skywalker because it's a new Star Wars movie. I'm going to see it. There may be parts I like, maybe parts I don't like, but that's okay. I don't have to like the whole thing in order to enjoy myself. But if you enjoyed the weekly, comment, like, subscribe, whatever the platform you're watching this on allows. But wherever that may be, I'll always catch you on Foosh.